Hello world! Today I'm going to show you how to change or reseat the RAM in a Dell Vostro 1500. This was built a couple years ago. Uh, it was it's this it's a rebranded Inspiron 1525. They're exactly the same except this one's painted black. Um, so to start out, we've got the computer turned off, needed to be unplugged, and we need to take the battery out. It's very critical. Now. Most computers are going to have their RAM in one of two places. On the bottom, under a panel, or under the keyboard. This one has both. Um, for convenience sake, most computers do tend to have both on the bottom, but depending on space constraints, they might do what this one did. So, this one's really simple. It has an M under it, which stands for memory. Uh, some other computers will have uh, little chip diagrams, or a little picture of a chip, which indicates that's the panel you need to take off. If you're not sure, you can take off both panels and look for what looks like what I'm about to show you. Yeah, it won't do any harm to take off the panels and put them back. In fact, most of the, thing, this, most of the things here I'm going to be showing you are, won't even void your warranty because they will show you how to do them in the owner's manual. So. We're going to take off this panel, just a little Phillips head screwdriver, take it off, and the RAM's right there. Now, to save space, they changed the design of a RAM socket and a laptop so that it's easy to pull out, and it takes little space to do so. There are just two tabs on the side, one on each side. You pull them apart a little bit, and the RAM pops up at a 45 degree angle. You pull that out, now you can put in a new one, or you can put this one back in to reseat it. Reseating is just that, you just have to take it out and put it back in again. Uh, you're going to want to look at the gold contact on the bottom on both sides. Make sure that there's no goop on it or corrosion. If there is, you're going to want to go to your drugstore and get Q-tips and a bottle of rubbing alcohol, as high a purity as you can find. I use 91% purity rubbing alcohol, and you just rub a little bit of the rubbing alcohol on the pins with your Q-tip and let it dry. Uh, once it's done that, uh, it'll be cleaned and you can put it back in. Now there's a little tab here that makes sure you can only put it in one way. Uh, you can see if you look here, uh, you can't see it, but there will be a little spot that prevents you from putting it in and any other way. If I try to put it in backwards, it just doesn't work. So I'm going to put this in at a 45 degree angle. Make sure it's fully in there. You won't be able to see much of the pins, maybe the very top. Then all you have to do is push down, and you're done. Now, like I said, this computer has an additional stick of RAM underneath the keyboard. So, we're going to flip this guy over. You know, supposing we need to reseat both, or if we need to replace both. Now this one's under the keyboard. So, once you've opened the computer like this, there are usually about three parts. There's the palm rest, the keyboard, and the keyboard bezel. The keyboard bezel is what we're interested in because it hides a couple screws that hold the keyboard down. So, put a little flathead screwdriver over here. There's a little spot to put it, and if I work it right, it just pops up. Uh, the first time you do it, it'll be a little disconcerting because it makes some snapping noises. The biggest trick is you don't want to bend it too far. Uh, it has some amount of flex to it, but not that much. Uh, if you're really having trouble, you should stop and double check that there are no screws that go into it. That has happened a couple times in the various computer models, and it's a good thing to double check so you don't break anything. Now, we've got this off, we can set it to the side, and unscrew the keyboard. Now, keyboards have little snaps on the sides that prevent them from popping up even when the screws are out, so you sort of have to pull them a bit to actually get them to come out. Uh, additionally, keyboards are attached using a ribbon cable to the computer. This cable communicates all the information typed in your keyboard to the computer. Now, they're pretty easy to remove, but you need to know how to do them. 
Uh, there are basically two styles. Uh, one of them, there is a little socket and there are two, it's usually a white socket with two different color, uh, with two darker uh, pull tabs on the front and you just pull them out gently and they don't have to go very far. This one's a little different. Uh, it's It flips up to release it. So all I do is I flip this blue part up and the cable will come free. This is also a good time to clean your keyboard if you feel the need to do such a thing. Now, this computer has the RAM right underneath the little bit that you plug the keyboard into. You probably can't see it well, but I can pop it up and it comes out just like the other one. Looks just the same. I can reinsert it at a 45 degree angle if I can see what I'm doing. Pop it down. Snap it down like that. Now that's all back to normal. When you're reinstalling the keyboard, you're going to notice there are a bunch of tabs at the bottom. That holds the bottom half of the keyboard on. Uh, so I'm going to to reinstall this ribbon cable, I put it back in its original place, just slide it in, and drop down the uh, latch. Now I'm going to insert the bottom edge first, making sure those tabs go into the correct place, and snap the tops down. Then it's just a matter of screwing it back together. And reinstalling this. And again, you want to insert the end with the tabs here in first. And it'll snap down along the way. Make sure you push down on the things uh, that cover the hinges because if you don't, they don't tend to snap down with everything else. I'm going to reinstall the battery and plug it in. And as long as I haven't messed up anything terribly, it will work. Now, you might be wondering what kind of thing you would do this with. Now, you might want to reseat your RAM if you're having trouble with your computer breaking, uh, with your computer crashing frequently, or if you seem to have other problems like your computer won't turn on. Uh, it's a good way to make sure that the connections didn't get loose. It's a problem that can happen on any kind of computer, um, Mac or PC, because all of them have uh, those RAM sockets and sometimes things get wiggled around in there and prevent it from working. Now you can see everything's working fine and means we haven't messed anything up. Um, so that's all. Now you know how to remove and reinstall RAM on a Dell Vostro 1500.